Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Rayhan, and now you're listening to Code Afghas. Okay, so what's up, everyone? I hope all of you are doing well. You know, since the pandemic, everything is going online, like school, work, meetup, and the workshop, and also including the conference. Is also is going online, and we hope someday it's back to normal as usual. Amen. First thing I want to say thank you to all listeners. God of Gas reach four thousand listeners. Ooh, I didn't expect that. So in order to make the God of Gas get better, I've been planning something for this project. So um, I hope this project can inspire, motivate, help. People who wants to learn programming or to start his career in IT field. It also could be for developers who want to get more insight or knowledge in technology from other developers. And speaking of technology, today we're gonna learn about a future technology with special guests. From Pakistan. So, are you ready to learn? Let's listen together. It's time to take for Okay, everyone, welcome back. So, we have a special guest from Pakistan. I'm a little searching about him. He's really excited to share about the data science, and uh, we're gonna talk about data science. Uh, I think. So maybe you can uh, introduce. Yes. First of all, thank you so much for inviting me to this podcast, Rehan. I'm really honored okay. to be here. Uh, my name is Said Ahmed. Uh, I belong to Pakistan, and I am a senior software engineer at Zepcom here in Karachi. So I have been working uh, for a long time on mobile and web applications, and also uh, some data science and stuff as well. So. Uh, Uh, my curiosity uh, about the data science grew around in 2018, you can say, and I did a, a complete course from there, uh, from the data camp, uh, which included 25 courses related to NLP, data analytics, and other stuff related to data science. So I completed that roadmap, and after that, I like have worked on my personal projects as well. Uh, and nowadays, I'm working as a machine learning engineer with the Ombena. Ombena is an online uh, collaborative platform where we solve real-world problems using the uh, power of AI and ML. We are working on problems related to the climate change, child trafficking, immigration, and other things, and using data science and AI and ML to get insights about these pressing problems of the world. So that's what I am up to now. Okay, that's awesome. Uh, I say we're gonna talk this the, the science stuff in April, but <laughs> but you know I'm sorry I can't make it in the time. So we can, you know like this pandemic and, and yeah busy this year. So uh, how about the condition there? The pandemic, how the situation? Uh, well, overall, uh, as uh, you know, COVID has uh, like changed a lot of things uh, throughout the world, and it's same here in Pakistan. So there are a lot of people that lost their jobs in the beginning, but I think uh, things are quite stable, and like uh, people are getting back to their jobs and normal lives, you can say. And the condition here is uh, comparatively stable to other countries. So I think like things will improve, but it will. Take time, you know. So hopefully we will uh, soon uh, like overcome these challenges, and we will uh, like continue to uh, work and work as we used to do. I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, same like in here in Indonesia, you know, like the COVID is getting worse. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, back to our topic. Uh, so what exactly is uh the, the science? I mean. You know, maybe probably uh, the the listener out there haven't know about the data science. I mean, 
why we should learn about data science? I mean, uh, how worth it is it? So maybe you can explain to us. Yes. Uh, so, Reha, first of all, as you know, and every software engineer knows that uh, in our daily work and as we study, like if someone has studied uh, study software engineering, computer science, or something related to that in the university as well. So as software engineers, we are used to uh, work with the data, right? We uh, read data structures and algorithms. Uh, we uh, work with the data in our web applications. We work with the data in mobile applications. So it's really important to uh, uh, know the nature of data and everything related to data. And we are used to do with uh, the data uh, as a software engineer. So it's usual for us to work related to that. Or maybe you can say our work depends on the data. So uh, the problem is that uh, the term data science is comprised of two terms. Actually, you can say first of that first part of the term data science is the data and second one is the science so data is actually data science is actually the field in which you study the under study and try to understand the behavior of data the nature of data the insights that data that you can dig out from the data or maybe you can say you can mine the data and gain some uh, important statistics out of that or some important figures out of that. So this thing is actually uh, called data science. And let me tell you that this field is not new. It has been around for a long time. So it was uh, like uh, before the term data science was coined, it was called data mining, data analytics, or maybe a, a mixture of data engineering and data analytics, you can say. So this thing has been around for the years. But recently, what happened is that uh, the people in the community coined a new term for that by the name of data science. So that is why, and you know, uh, in the past 10 years, you can say uh, the computing power uh, has been improved. You can say like before that, mm. people used to have, have slow machines, slow computers or something like that. So we got a lot of faster processors and they're actually uh, in the position of everyone. So uh, nowadays, if you have a laptop that works really fast, uh, comparatively, if you uh, say 20 years ago, our laptops, our PCs were really slow. So this is the important thing that we, uh, uh, that's contributing to the evolution of data science, or maybe you can say acceptance of the data science to a wider community and appeal of data science to a wider community. That's why everyone is nowadays like interested in learning data science, or maybe everyone can implement data science easily compared to the, uh, the 20 years ago time, you can say. So, yeah, actually, basically, we are working with data right now, right? Mm -hmm. Every aspect of this world is full of data. Exactly. Uh, so, what the the person up doing the data science what is the person called uh, a person who is doing data science is called data scientist and actually uh, we need some of the basic skills for that you can say some languages that are often used in the data science like r like python uh, okay uh, and we also need to be good at some libraries of python you can say like numpy Pandas, Scikit-learn, TensorFlow. So these are the libraries that we need to be uh, good at if we want to become a data scientist and we want to start doing data science. Yeah, so, and the machine learning, there is some machine learning. Yes, uh, actually the basic difference between data science and machine learning is that when you are doing data science, so you are actually working on uh, exploring the data or maybe digging insights out of that data or maybe getting statistics out of that data or maybe you can say getting facts and figures out of that data right this thing is called right. data science and there is another thing called machine learning machine learning is the field in which we actually use data 
to predict something. So we use uh, maybe if we are predicting some numbers, then uh, we call it regression analysis. And if we are predicting some classes, like if I want to distinguish between two images, uh, that whether it's uh, image of a cat or dog, then it's called classification. So these are the two main branches in the machine learning, you can say. So machine learning is more about the prediction, prediction stuff. And data science is more about getting insights out of the data. So this is the basic difference between data science and machine learning. And both are parts of a, a wider uh, field, you can say. And it, this field is called AI, artificial intelligence in general. So the data science and machine learning are actually, they, they are related, right? Yes, quite related. Like you can say, if you want to uh, be a data scientist, you uh, may need to know some of the machine learning algorithms as well. And if you want to be a machine learning engineer, you uh, may need to know some of the data engineering, data analytics, and maybe data science stuff, or maybe you need to know some of the Python, some of the libraries that are commonly yeah. used. Because uh, the work in every company depends uh, uh, on the tech stack they are using, or maybe the nature of work they are doing. So uh, the roles might overlap somewhere, or somewhere they are not interrelated as well. Like uh, most, uh, mostly uh, when you talk about big companies like Google, Microsoft, Facebook, so they do have separate roles for machine learning engineers, data scientists, data analysts, data engineers, or maybe you can say anyone uh, uh, in the data related field. But if you are like working for a startup, maybe a smaller company, then these roles might overlap and you might be uh, needed to know some of the other stuff as well. Okay, okay, so uh let's say i want to start my path as a data scientist uh, mm -hmm. i mean how how do i start man you can tell 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 about it to mm -hmm. us yes so uh Rehan, first of all uh, you need to learn python or some other language like r because uh now first of all the question arises that why do we learn python or r language right so right. the reason is that we do have a lot of, uh, you can say, scientific libraries in Python that make it easier for us to do data analysis, right? We don't have that much libraries in JavaScript, in Golang, or maybe in other language, languages, right? So our language and Python, they have a lot of libraries that are re that make it really easier for you to do some statistical analysis. Uh, analysis or something like that and statistical analysis and probability these are the things on which the foundations of ai data science and machine learning stand right so first of all you need to learn data uh, for for uh, becoming a data science engineer or maybe becoming a machine learning engineer you need to uh, know python or some other language maybe it is r or some other language that might help you in data science and data analysis or related stuff, right? After that, uh, you need to be good at some of the libraries that these languages offer. Like uh, I mostly use, uh, work with Python. So I use NumPy a lot, like NumPy for uh, manipulating numbers or playing with the numbers or doing uh, some numerical calculations, you can say. And then I use Pandas a lot to play with the data sets, to play with, uh, you can say, the uh, data sets that involve more than numbers, right? Strings, uh, other data types, or something like that, okay? So first of all, these are the two libraries that you want to, uh, like you need to be good at if you are starting with Python. Uh, and then after that, you need to have some real world projects in your bag, like you can go to Kaggle, or maybe you can go to the Omdena, as I mentioned before, that I am working with them on a project related to climate change. So you can work with them on the open source projects or something like that. Uh, so there are a lot of talented people out there who work in groups with them, so you can participate with them. So this, the third step is really necessary to get you some real-world 
or you can say hands-on experience so, so that uh, if you go to the interview for a company you don't only know the theoretical stuff but you are also you also have some of the uh, real world skills in your brain right so these are the three steps that i think are necessary for a person or newbie or a beginner to get started with data science or machine learning stuff okay 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 so first we should learn about uh, the the language of the for the data science first right like mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, python uh, r language mm -hmm. and sql it can be related to data yes, science exactly. right yes okay. uh so after after we uh, let's say after we we have learned about that I mean, mm -hmm. what next is our step to more, more, more advance in data science? Maybe we can join to some project about data science or we can create the project for data science. So maybe what's the next after that? Yes, exactly. As I told you before that uh, nowadays I'm working with Omnina, which is an online platform. What we do is that we uh, work on a lot of data sets related to uh, child trafficking related to the climate change or something like that and we get insights out of those data sets right so and there is another platform it's quite popular it's known as Kaggle so Kaggle has a lot of data sets available online uh, and what you can do is that you can participate in the challenges there and then they uh, at the end of the challenge they will uh, assign you a position on the leaderboard like how much you did good in that particular challenge so like there, and also there are a lot of open source uh, repositories out there that have a lot of data sets related to the, uh, like anything, maybe it's uh, related to housing, maybe it's related to uh, something else, anything that, uh, like uh, most of the people that uh, nowadays, uh, they uh, come to the data science field, they are from unrelated fields like biomedical engineering, or maybe biochemicals or something like that. So uh, what they do is that they work on the data sets relevant to their field. So maybe uh, someone who is from biochemical background, he can work on a biochemical data set or something like that and get insights out of that and then feature, share it on their LinkedIn or maybe upload it to their GitHub or maybe make a notebook out of that and uh, tell some of the useful insights out of that particular data set to the world. So the third step is related more to the practical work, uh, work rather than the theoretical work. So what you need to do is that you need to do some real world projects. Some you need to have some real world stuff in your bag so that when you go for an interview, you not only have some uh, theoretical language, uh, theoretical concepts in your mind but you also have some real world experience uh, in your back so that the companies can hire you and maybe ultimately they will assign you. And, but uh, I say that at the end of the day, it's the job experience that in which you progress a lot, like you go from a junior data scientist to uh, someone who's in the middle of their career and then go to a senior data scientist position. But it's the projects that get help you get a job. Exactly. Uh, basically, as a software developer, also we we must creating something for our portfolio, right? Because yes, exactly. Because, because uh, the the company will be hire us if if we have something to show up, like the project that we have created, exactly. like. Like you can put on the GitHub or something. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, maybe you had some uh, the best resource for learn the data science. Like uh, I don't know. Like I have tried DataCam. Is it? I think that's a good stop in DataCam dot mm -hmm. So uh, where do you usually learn about data science? Mm -hmm. So, Reha, uh, uh, as I told you before that I started with the data camp. So I completed their data scientist with Python track, which had 25 courses back in 2018. So I got a lot of knowledge from that uh, course. 
uh, like uh, I still use uh, uh, the knowledge can get from there in my projects. But overall, I think that there are so many free resources out there that you don't need to uh, go to something uh, that's actually someone that's actually charging a fee to you. So as I told you before that it's uh, the pathway to become a data scientist is like uh, getting better at Python or R language and then getting better at their libraries and then doing some practical stuff like some project or something like that. So I think uh, that if you want to be a good data scientist, then what you can do is that you can make a timetable for yourself and like give you yourself a timeline of maybe three months or maybe four months uh, and then make a daily uh, routine for yourself to go through these topics in detail like Python uh, if you are taking the Python plan. So I'm speaking a lot about Python because uh, I'm comfortable with that. So if someone is using some other language, they can uh, look out for the similar libraries in that language as well. So you need to be good at Python so you can start with the Python language. Then you can uh, do practice in some NumPy, Pandas, Scikit-learn for the prediction related stuff. And then you can ultimately, if you do these three to four things, then you will be like, if you uh, do this, you'll be ultimately good enough to uh, work on a real world data set and get insights out of that. So, uh, I think if you do these four things, uh, then you can start with any project and you can start working on that. And ultimately, I think it's the real world stuff uh, or maybe real world data set that from which you can learn a lot. You, can, you, you can't learn just by learning Python or maybe uh, learning Pandas, NumPy, or something like that. At the end of the day, it's the real world project from where you will gain exposure to the real world problems or maybe the real world things that data scientists encounter a lot in their daily work. So this is the actual thing that companies want out from you. So I think if you uh, do some projects, you'll be good enough to and prepared to apply for any company as a professional data scientist. That's why the, the data scientist is such high demand, right? Yes, exactly. And there, are lot of, there is a lot of like shortage of good data scientists, you can say, uh, as well. So it also creates a chance for the people who are actually hardworking or maybe who are committed or maybe who are passionate about data science to uh, like jump into this field and uh, get good experience of the real world projects. And then like there is a lot of demand for the people who want to who are good at their work actually in the data science field as well. So if you are good data science, uh, if you are a good data scientist, ultimately you will get a good job. Yeah. So uh, maybe you can give a example like uh, which company that already embraced the data science like and machine learning, maybe listed or uh, have a know about that? Yes. Actually, Rehan, let me tell you an interesting thing about the data science and machine learning stuff. So recently, Facebook, Google, Amazon, and every big company like Salesforce, that's actually working on some data science and machine learning stuff. They do have their blogs. They do have their YouTube channels. So they have, like, it's a really good thing that they have outsourced their whole material for the aspiring data scientists or machine learning engineers to read stuff. So I also saw a uh, YouTube channel from the uh, Amazon. So they open source their internal machine learning uh, material that they use to train their machine learning engineers on. So I think it's a really good uh, opportunity for everyone who wants to uh, dive into the field of data science, so maybe is an aspiring data scientist to start with those resources that are shared by the world class companies that are actually on the, uh, you can say, on the foot front of the uh, analytics, AI, machine learning or data science. Like there is a complete uh, a curriculum by the Google that's totally free for the machine learning engineers. It has everything in detail uh, that you need to become a data science or machine learning engineer. It's totally free. There's a whole YouTube channel by the Amazon 
there is a whole video series by the Facebook. So these are the companies that are actually working on high level data science stuff. So I think the best resource to learn is from those companies. You can just go to those resources or maybe just uh, search them out and then just make a timetable and start learning that stuff. So I think there is nothing uh, better than those resources for you. Yeah, exactly. There are Facebook, Google, also Netflix, right there. Yes, exactly. I saw um, uh, the Grabs uh, video blog. I saw, I guess they also do have a YouTube channel. So like there are a lot of things that you can also learn from the regional players. Like Kareem has a really good engineering blog where you can uh, see the best practices of the data science, what they are using at their uh, like uh, massive scale uh, uh, machine learning platforms, or maybe you can say data science platform, what they are using in production, what are the good practices that their engineers follow, what are the good things that their data scientists has fig have figured out uh, after doing a lot of research on that. So I think everything is open source and uh, you just need to uh, read the things. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, every year, I think it will be get more, more, more hype. The, the science will be more hype, I think. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, I think data science is a really uh, uh, overhyped field these days, you can say. But it's, it's a really safe career to pursue because there is a lot of demand. And nowadays, every company is moving to the cloud. So they are transferring their data from the traditional databases, you can say, to the cloud. So there is a lot of th things that are like uh, they have to come up with and they do need a lot of good data scientists to work on the data stuff that they are moving to cloud or maybe uh, more scalable machines, you can say, or more scalable platforms, you can say. So yes, they do need a lot of good data scientists, machine learning engineers to work on the stuff. So uh, I think there is a really good demand for the good data scientists out there, machine learning engineers who are good at their work. So, and this demand will grow, will grow uh, as more and more companies uh, uh, like they're joining this data science band, band back in, you can say, or machine learning band back in, or the AI revolution. So as this thing is uh, like starting to grow, so uh, I think, yes, uh, the demand for good data scientists Increase ultimately. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm really, uh, you know, I'm really amazed about that the science this these days, like can uh, help people to get better at their job, and then it can yeah. be, and also I I have I have read about the article. It it also can help uh, solving the murder case, and there's so many aspects that could help with the data science. Yes, exactly. As I told you that uh, I'm working with a company on Dena. So they have, like, uh, when I saw their profile, they had a lot of uh, interesting projects in their bag. Like, some days ago, uh, they worked on a problem that was related to finding the potential of solar power in Kenya. So they were actually, uh, like, getting the snapshots uh, of the maps, and then they were finding the rooftops that can be used potentially for generating solar power and ultimately solving the power shortages in Africa. And also, they also worked on a problem related to the uh, allocation of waste food. So there are a lot of things, there is a lot of potential, uh, not only in terms of business or maybe in terms of getting a job or maybe you can say in terms of something uh, related to robots or something like that. But it can also help us solve some of the pressing problems of the modern world, like the transportation in the cities or something like that. So I think that there is a really great potential in the data science to not only uh, uh, career, career wise, but also uh, finding the solution of the modern problems that we yeah. are facing. Uh, so, yes. Yeah, exactly. That's true. Yes. So, uh, so do do you have tips for people that want to learn? 
people out there that are listener want to learn about digital science uh what is exactly the i mean the most the most hard or the most difficult to learn about the, the science what is what's your tips Well, actually, I think that there is nothing that's difficult to learn. Actually, if you are passionate about something, so it's really easy for you to jump into any field. And these days, we are seeing a lot of self-taught engineers, software engineers, mobile application developers, or something like that that don't have college degrees or university degrees, or or they don't have a traditional computer science background. So yes. you can even become a data scientist and machine learning engineer as well by uh, online sources but the thing where uh, i see uh, that the main problem with the uh, something someone who's just starting with the data science is that uh, uh, like first of all uh, there is a hurdle of understanding of programming language if they don't have a computer science background or if they are not a software engineer or maybe they don't have a background in the programming languages so that's the main hurdle and after that if you are like if you have learned python and after that you uh, want to learn some library related to the numerical analysis like numpy or maybe you want to do some data analysis using pandas so for numpy you need to understand a bit of statistics you can say like if you are finding mean of a uh, of the numbers using numpy so you should understand that what does mean actually mean right what does median actually mean what does mod actually mean and what does like uh, other there are hundreds of terms related to the statistics so what do they mean actually so uh, like there are a lot of things like they, they are not that much advanced things you can say But they are just basic things in the statistics and linear algebra, mathematics, uh, algebra that you have uh, might have even studied at your uh, high school. You can say or school. You need to uh, recall those concepts. So this is the step after programming that's a bit difficult because if you want to become a full stack developer, you don't need to uh, be good at maths that much compared to the uh if you want to become a data scientist right so if you want to become a data scientist there are two hurdles for you one is the programming so if you if you are already know a programming language or maybe if you are a software engineer maybe self taught or have a computer science background that will not be a problem for you and secondly uh, doing some like mathematical analysis or something like that you need to have a basic understanding of the mathematical concepts the statistical concepts and something like that and that's it if you do these two things you are good to go like you can you can become a really good data scientist wow okay agree about that so actually the main is we we just need to to get it i mean just just do it just learn it just start learning yes exactly uh, i think there is nothing in the world that's impossible it was never and it will never be so Uh, especially nowadays it's an open platform for everyone there are hundreds of tutorials on the youtube on the udemy uh, there there are a lot of paid tutorials paid courses as well there are a lot of open source resources free resources as well so whatever suits for you make a time table for yourself and just to start learning just to start doing things and things will be easier for me believe me it's really easy it's nothing that much difficult Yes, exactly. Phew. Okay, time flies. This this is really great. But uh, actually, that's it, everyone. That's a wrap. So uh, maybe we can do in another episode, right, Sad? Yes, sure. Okay, so the conclusion is. First, if we want to switching career to data science, we have to learn about the the language for the data science, like Python, R, and then the best resource you can learn from the big company and turn to the project 
like or you can learn from the that came dot com or anything like what what say what said uh, Ahmed is told earlier, and then just 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 do it. Just start. Just start. Just start it. Yeah, just that's what it. I can say. That just start doing it. Uh, like uh, there are hundreds of things online. There are hundreds of people online uh, whom you can reach out for help or maybe any guidance or something like that. If you are stuck somewhere, just go to them and ask them questions. They'll be happy to guide you. Even you can reach out to me as well. So uh, on my LinkedIn, so we can share it in the along with this podcast, this uh, recording. So I think you can get it and just start learning things. It's really easy. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Take care. Thank you so much, Nehan. Take care. So that's it for today. Thanks for listening. See you in the next episode. I'm Rayhan. Have a good day. Hope you're doing well. Stay healthy. And so, bye bye. Peace.